Hello everyone, it's Sandra and welcome to today's video. I really wanted to share my favorite spring fragrances right now with you because there are quite a few so I figured I could just make a video talking all about them. I don't buy fragrance for the sake of reviewing it. For me, fragrance is something that's really personal, that's really emotional. I love to mark memories with fragrance. I love to buy fragrance to commemorate certain events in my life. I love to buy fragrance when I travel. There's so much beauty in the world of fragrance and because it's something so personal and because it's an extension of our style and an extension of our personality, I think that's why so many people are getting more into fragrance. I feel like the fragrance world has certainly exploded in, in the last few years. I have a core set of fragrances that I love to wear year round that I like to refer to as my signature scents, but I definitely love exploring different things depending on the season. And for me, spring is of course very, very floral. I thought I would start with the fragrance that I'm wearing today. I'm still wearing it and still very much loving it. It's very, very, very springy <laughs> to me. And it is Sleeping on the Roof by Floraiku. Floraiku is a fragrance brand that I think is really cool, but it's not a fragrance brand that I would recommend checking out like buying blind. It's definitely something I would recommend seeking out in person, or you can buy a discovery set from their website, but it's a very, very interesting brand. Nothing that I've smelled from this brand has smelled generic, and everything has like an odd little twist to it. They also do a lot of tea-inspired fragrances. Sleeping on the Roof is a Lily of the Valley fragrance. The official notes, I, I wrote everything down. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the official notes of each fragrance and then I'm going to tell you what it smells like to me. So the official notes are Lily of the Valley, Orange Blossom, Musk, and Amber. And this to me is a very, very green and earthy Lily of the Valley fragrance. It smells like a spring morning. You're taking a walk. The, the, the earth is still a little bit wet. There's grass with dew on it. So there's, there's that green earthy element to it, which I find really, really beautiful. I think that it really makes this fragrance stand apart from other Lily of the Valley fragrances that I've tried. I personally love Lily of the Valley and it's definitely a floral scent that holds so many special dear memories in my heart and it's something that I always associate with spring. So I love this so much. On me, I find this to be quite long lasting. The Lily of the Valley element doesn't linger all day long, but the really delightful green earthiness, musk and amber kind of, I can still smell it on myself. As, um, as the day goes on, I can still smell it on my clothes at the end of the day. I tend to love fragrances that sit a little bit closer to the skin. I just want to be able to smell it on myself. While it is really nice to get compliments on the way that I smell from a stranger, it's not something that is a high priority for me when it comes to choosing a fragrance. I am selfish in that way, I guess. I don't love things to be so strong that they are, you know, they linger in the room after I'm, I'm out of the room, you know what I mean? Keeping in line with the Lily of the Valley theme, I have Maison Margiela, Springtime in a Park. I recently mentioned this in my Sephora sale recommendation video. This is such a beautiful, beautiful spring fragrance. I find it so delightful and so well balanced. It really smells like springtime in the park. It's, it smells like walking on a sunny afternoon it's, it's spring, you know, the air is still kind of crisp, but the, the trees are starting to bloom and you're taking a nice, delightful walk. And it's, it's so, so, it's such a happy fragrance. Lily of the Valley, pear, and musk. It's beautifully balanced between the fruity notes of the pear and the floral notes of the lily and the, of the valley. And there's a little bit of sweetness from the musk. This is definitely sweeter and uh, a little fruitier than the sleeping on the roof. While this is really green and earthy, this is more sweet and um, sweet and juicy. And it's just, it makes me smile. It makes me smile. I think a lot of people would love this fragrance. I don't, I don't find it to be particularly polarizing in a way. It still smells unique. It, to me, this does not smell generic in any way. One of my most worn, especially, in terms of, uh, of spring. I can wear this day or night 
and it makes me happy. The last Lily of the Valley fragrance I have here is also by Maison Margiela, and this is Lazy Sunday Morning. The official notes of this fragrance are aldehydes, Lily of the Valley, pear, rose, iris, white musk, ambrette, Indonesian patchouli leaf. This is very airy, obviously, because of the aldehydes. It smells like opening a window, having a fresh breeze come into the room, and there are, you know, flowers nearby. Um, it's very, very floral, but also very airy and light and clean and cozy at the same time. Here, the florals are definitely louder than, than any of, of the musk in this scent. To me, it's like, this is Maison Margiela's version of Byredo Blanche. So if you like Byredo Blanche, you will probably also really enjoy Lazy Sunday Morning. Blanche with a kick of Lily of the Valley equals Lazy Sunday Morning. It's a beautiful, light and airy floral fragrance. It's just not as musky as I would have hoped, but I love musk, so <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being biased here. But I, th I think this is a really, really beautiful spring fragrance option, and uh, it's another one to check out at Sephora if you're looking for a new spring fragrance during the VIB sale. Next up is, of course, Byredo Blanche. This is, um, it's, a, it's still a light floral, but this is a lot more clean and soapy. And this just smells, to me, it smells like a crisp white cotton shirt that has just been laundered. It's a beautiful spring and summer fragrance to me. I, I wear this all spring and all summer long. Um, it's really nice and fresh and clean, which is what I tend to gravitate towards when the temperatures start to get a little bit warmer. The official notes of this fragrance are, again, aldehydes. When, whenever you see a, a fragrance being described as aldehydic or something that has aldehydes in it, just think fresh and airy. So it's got aldehydes, rose, pink pepper, peony, violet, orange flower, musk, and sandalwood. So it's got that beautiful musky sandalwood base that gives it a little bit of sweetness. But um, yeah, to me, fresh, freshly laundered, crisp white shirt, but it doesn't smell like traditional, you know, linen scents. It doesn't smell like detergent, but there is that clean, clean soapy element in it, but the florals are beautifully blended together, I feel like. I tried to kind of have a tie in between each fragrance as I go down the line. So we did the Lily of the Valley fragrances first, and then now we're moving into something clean and soapy and rosy with this fragrance here. This is, I'm going to attempt a Spanish pronunciation of this beautiful fragrance. This is Rosas Secas by Koki Koki. Koki Koki is a fragrance brand that I really, really love. It's a fragrance brand that I discovered in Mexico. This is dried rose petals. Uh, the brand describes it as dried white roses. So imagine dry white roses mixed with green tobacco leaf and some powdery notes. So this is very, very fresh and soapy, but also smells like roses at the same time. I absolutely adore this fragrance. I also really love the tobacco fragrance by this brand. That's one of my summer favorites. This is roses mixed with tobacco and it is so, so beautiful and fresh. To me, it smells like a really, really fancy soap. Think, think just taking a really lovely, decadent, soapy bubble bath in a bathtub filled with rose petals. It's not too loud, so it, it does, you know, again, sit close to the skin. It's not, not going to offend anybody. You can wear this to work. You can wear this on a date. It's such a beautiful fragrance for spring and summer, but for some reason, I'm more drawn to it in the spring. If you are a rose lover, and if you like soft and clean and fresh fragrances, I think this would be a beautiful beautiful one to try. Continuing with the rose theme, I have Exalté. Exalté is a fragrance developed by Fumi Monet, who is one of my favorite fragrance influencers. She collaborated with the Canadian brand Bella Ora, and they developed a fragrance together, and this is Exalté. And Exalté is a beautiful Turkish rose fragrance. The official notes here are Turkish rose, lemon, pink pepper, vanilla, amber, sandalwood, musk and benzoin. If Rosa Secas by Koki Koki is like clean and soapy, this is very sensual and warm. It's also very, very long wearing. 
Honestly, one spritz on each wrist and I can still smell it on myself all day long. When I smell this, I think of making rose jam. I think of Turkish rose petals being kind of macerating together in a pot being heated up with some sugar and just caramelizing in a pot. The sweetness of the vanilla and the coziness of the amber really, really shine through. They kind of grab onto the rose and they just linger on my skin all day. There is, you know, some pink pepper and some lemon in there to give it some brightness, but on my skin throughout the day, it's definitely more of like a cozy, almost, almost gourmand type of, uh, of rose scent. It's very edible, it's very delicious. I think if you normally love your gourmand fragrances and you like to occasionally dip your toe into florals, I think you'll absolutely adore this. The next rose fragrance is totally different. This is very fresh and zesty. It's Rose Milano by Giorgio Armani, the Privé line. This is like a really, really crowd-pleasing fragrance. It's not too in your face. It's just a beautifully balanced fruity rose scent. The official notes are pear, lemon, bergamot, rose, jasmine, moss, patchouli. It's uh, it's safe, you know? It's safe, but not, not in a bad way. It's very juicy. It's got that juicy citrusy element to it. I find the the playfulness between the, the floral notes and um, the, the fruity notes in this fragrance are really pleasant. Playful, it's girly, it's really youthful, and uh, this is a great work fragrance, I think. Something from the regular Giorgio Armani fragrance line is Si Passione. I tend to wear this more in the evening. For me, this is such a beautiful spring, summer, date night fragrance, but this is definitely something that can be worn in the colder months as well. Again, would make a really great work fragrance. The notes of this fragrance are pear, black currant, pink pepper, grapefruit, pineapple, rose, jasmine, heliotrope, vanilla, cedar, amberwood, and patchouli but it is so, so well blended. I, I love it. I think it's, it's again, really, really nicely balanced. The, the fruity notes with the floral notes and the woodsy and the patchouli base, I think that they all just work together really, really well. Not, there, there isn't like one particular type of note that is jarring. There isn't anything that's, that's fighting for attention with anything else. It's delightful and I think the bottle is so chic. They have different versions of this fragrance. They also have an intense version of this fragrance. This is, uh, is this an eau de parfum? Yes, it's an eau de parfum, not an eau de toilette. So it definitely has some heft to it and it's, it's quite long wearing. And uh, the bottle is just so beautiful, isn't it? It almost looks like a nail polish a giant nail, nail polish bottle. The last fragrance I want to talk about is not a fruity floral and it's actually not really floral at all, but um, I have to give it a shout out because I absolutely adore this fragrance and it actually works really nice layered with some of the florals that I mentioned in this video. I think this would be an excellent spring and summer fragrance. For me personally and, and my signature scent style, this would be like a year round signature scent for me. I am absolutely addicted to this, and I've, I've mentioned this in, in quite a few videos, but definitely has, has to have its moment in this video too. The official notes here are coriander, pepper, juniper needle, geranium, clary sage, clove stem, musk, magnolia, and mace. So it's a very green, fresh, woodsy, slightly sweet scent. It is just it's delightful. The, the green and freshness of it makes it really nice for spring. You have that sweetness from the musk and the magnolia, and then you have that green freshness of the coriander and the juniper and the stems. It's just a beautifully balanced, spicy, a little spicy, a little green, a little fresh, a little woodsy type of scent. Um, this one is for all my friends that love Fragrances like Le Labo Santal 33, Le Labo Gaillac 10. Um, if you're into those types of fragrances, I think you will really enjoy this as well. It's, um, like I said, it's, it's not a fruity floral at all. I've worn it combined with Sleeping on the Roof, the first fragrance I mentioned in this video. I've worn it combined with Exalté. I think it's it's fun to mix something that's more green and, and woodsy with something more girly and floral and, and kind of discover new and exciting combinations and make something more uniquely you. Diasandurga is a brand that I've always heard about and I've always been kind of vaguely interested in them, but I haven't 
gotten the chance to explore the brand until this year, until you know I bought my, my first fragrance from them. And uh, I have absolutely adored every fragrance that I've tried from them. I recently bought a little sample pack. If you go on their website, there is an option to kind of create your own discovery set. You can choose four fragrances and you get them, you know, you get a sample pack and then you are able to redeem you know, whatever you spend on the samples, you're able to redeem towards buying a full size bottle of it. So I thought that that's a really great way to discover the brand. But the problem is I am really, really in love with all four of the fragrances I selected for my samples. So I don't know what my next Dias and Durga purchase will be. I want something more summery. So you have to wait and see because uh, I'm, I'm kind of giving myself time before I make that decision. But yeah, it's a brand that while I only recently started dabbling in it this year, so far I've been really intrigued by the brand and I've, I've really enjoyed everything I've smelled from them. I think I'm going to end things here for now. I would love to chat with you all about fragrance and let me know what your signature scent this time of year is. Do you have a fragrance that you just always associate with spring? What are you loving right now? Let me know in the comment section below. I really appreciate you hanging out with me today and I will see you in my next video. Bye.